Ah, don't you love starting a new project when everything's fresh and new and you haven't screwed anything up yet? <laughs> Actually, this project has been in the works for quite a while, almost a year in fact. I think January was when I first got my first uh, bunch of things to, to play around with. And this all started, I guess it started originally when I began to see these things on Banggood and um, sort of vaguely were aware that they were for CNC something or other. And I'd seen videos occasionally on YouTube of CNC machine, and they're quite fun to watch some of them. They've got these enormous machines like the size of a bus or something just about, and they fly through aluminium and there's chips flying everywhere and they make this really cool shapes and everything. Um, but then I also saw CNC v videos related to Arduino, in particular one, uh, I think it was the NYC CNC guy, John something or other, and he was making a very simple setup to just move a pen around and draw a design on a piece of paper. And I thought, hey, I can I can do that. And it has something to do with Arduinos. I wasn't really sure what at the time. Um, so I bought what we see here. Actually, I had that already. Um, but I bought these here. And I was also curious to see how they would get here from China, whether there'd be any damage or, you know, missing parts or... Whether, whether it would just arrive as it was supposed to because there's quite some precision that's required if you want to do a good job of it. You need to have a <laughs> straight rod and everything. So I was I wanted to see if everything would be okay. So I just ordered this sort of thing here like as a, as a test. And um, it arrived fine. I, I don't think there's any problems with any of it actually. And each individual piece is fairly cheap. Just a few dollars for one of these things, a few dollars for one of those. But <laughs> it adds up, you know. So um, I thought I would just try making um, a, a pen plotter thing originally. And from that innocent beginning, it just sort of got out of control as I thought to myself, you know, if I'm going to try moving a pen around, why don't I, I might as well try putting a little routed bit thingy on it and cut some plywood. And if I'm going to do that, well, why not try making it a bit more rigid? and capable and powerful and try cutting some fiberglass boards or something like that. So anyway, from from that simple start, I've actually gone all the way to somewhat ambitiously trying to perhaps even cut carbon fiber with this thing. We shall see if that ever actually happens successfully, but that's the rather lofty goal, the end goal at this point. Um, so what I'm going to do in this video is just go over some of the initial design ideas that I had and when you're setting stuff up like this it's really really hard it's a like a big huge 3d puzzle that you have to sort of fit into your head and visualize how everything's going to move and you don't want you know things like this to happen where they're colliding with each other and you're trying to maximize as much of the span of the rails that you can to you know give you maximum travel and each axis and stuff and it has to be very rigid, or as rigid as possible. Um, you don't want it to get too expensive. I actually failed in, in that respect. It's um, probably going to cost quite a bit more than I had at first thought. But if, if it ends up cutting carbon fiber, hey, that's that's worth it, I think. Um, so in, for design, I found that the Google SketchUp tool, which is a 3D modeling sort of a visualization tool, that is really awesome. And that, unfortunately, I can't get it to run on Linux through Wine. So I'm going to have to switch over to my Windows machine at the end of this video and show you uh, some scenes from that. And I'll finish up the video with that. But um, yeah, basically, it all revolves around uh, a few sets of this sort of thing here. And my, my biggest um, issue, which I'll probably mention in the video later on, is how to get this height difference so this stepper motor is going to go on to the end of the uh, worm screw thing here like that oh it's screwed in so it's not going to fit but there's a height difference here it's um it's roughly 16 millimeters is what it needed to be and i ended up going with some eight millimeter aluminium plate and it's going to be a fairly heavy and sturdy thing when it's all done but the two eights give me just enough height to get that off there. So that's why you'll see some spaces to you know, 
lift up this height and stuff in the uh, design pictures. So I've ended up with a design that is going to be roughly 25 centimeters square and the z-axis is going to be about three centimeters up and down so it's not going to do any fancy 3d cutting or not much anyway it's just going to be a plain 2d router and cost uh, I don't know if I can be uh, brave enough to total up the cost of everything but uh, maybe I'll do that if somebody's interested later on but this is going to be different for you maybe if you live in New Zealand it might be the same because I'm getting some things from Bunnings um, so part of it's going to be made of aluminium angle and um, but other bolts and bits and pieces I'll probably get from Bunnings or Mitre 10 and those kind of places as well um, but the plate that I've cut that I've had cut uh, will have cut is um, a one-off design and I don't think I can really recommend doing this so this is not supposed to be a tutorial or anything like that by any means I mean I have never even used a CNC machine let alone made one and the way I've done it is going to be costing way way more than a probably equally capable machine that you could just buy as a package uh, so it's all for the fun of making something at this point um, so I think I've waffled enough about that let me switch over to my Windows machine and waffle about the designs and then I'll just leave it at that I think for this video here's the first little design I came up with just from playing with those parts I found on the Nelco website that they have aluminium channel in various sizes so I picked out this one which I think was 80 by 40 and it would have kept everything quite rigid and nice and compact uh, in that the rod and the screw are next to each other I didn't really like the fact though that the motor in this case the motor would be mounted on the side like that and there wouldn't really be very solid mounting I mean it's tipped up 90 degrees and I think that let me use a 10 millimeter wooden block there to get the correct spacing for the screw and the motor shaft to meet up with each other properly um, so I'll probably just skip over most of this it's not that exciting but um, I just worked on a whole bunch of variations of that design channel on top of a channel different sizes of channel um, trying to work towards having the motor mounted properly with the screws holding it onto the bottom like that and then yeah the idea with having a um, channel like this is that all of the axes or the X, X and the Y axis at least could be exactly the same uh, that was the initial idea but it didn't look like it was going to turn out that way you can see we've got some crazy slightly different um, gantry thing there and then <clears throat> yeah I started to think at this point about how to <laughs> mount these onto a common platform and at this point I still had channel on the brain so I I also found out that they wouldn't sell me ch any lengths of channel less than five meters so if I was going to buy five meters and they're going to cut it for me I might as well try something like this to make the bottom platform from the channel as well uh, but I didn't like that idea too much because it's a bit tricky to keep everything uniform and flat and level and also hold it together nice and rigidly and you're going to ha end up having to drill lots of holes and trying to get it all straight and aligned and everything um, I also thought about this at this point I was having ideas about maybe just having one motor and using a belt to drive the other uh, screw so there's a z-axis showing up now um, kind of the same thing same thing but uh, <laughs> a little bit different here and there I think this is my palette that I was pulling all these pieces from each time to make another design. Um, different ideas. So now I started to abandon the idea of using channel and I started looking at the plate offcut stock listings on the Nelco website. Most of what they have was way too big for what I needed but I did notice that every now and then some small pieces come up and I think at this point I was looking at maybe six millimeter possibly eight millimeter thickness and decided to maybe go
go with that instead of using channel. Uh, it's more, yeah, it's more weight and it's less um, vertical rigidity. But with eight millimeter, I think it was going to be enough. And the nice thing about that is that with this thickness, you can now start to think about tapping the holes in here so that you don't need a, a bolt going through and a nut on the other side. You can just have a bolt going into this eight millimeter thickness of aluminium, and that's good enough to hold it together. Uh, so this is probably this is the first one that I came up with, which is using a z-axis with plate instead of um, channel and it's a bit awkward and it really looks like this heavy chunk of stuff is going to be overhanging and cause a bit of um, cause quite a bit of torsion I think around this axis pulling down that way and this one this block here would be getting pulled upwards and I didn't really like that too much and it didn't look like a very solid connection there so I was just playing with lots of ideas and um, okay, not sure what's oh, it's it's a z-axis with I don't know. Oh, well, you can see gradual evolution. And this is the first design where I thought about having these insets. In the end of the gantry, so there's a cut out, cutaway here, and then I thought if the motor could just be mounted lower into that plate, then it would meet up nicely here, uh, and these pieces could just be mounted directly to the plate instead of with the wooden spacer block like I have over here. Um, so, yeah, I think the goal with that was to try and reduce the distance from the backboard to the uh, motor because there's a lot of quite a lot of distance here and that's what's causing um, more uh, moment moment of inertia no there's a twisting moment that you get from having a weight supported by a point far away from it so that's what I was trying to reduce here and I was, you know, it looks like I was kind of worried about that too by the fact that I've put these here as um, reinforcement. Uh, anyway, so when you when you use this cutout and you put the motor back a bit by another 16 millimeters, you've saved th almost three and a half centimeters in this distance. So it's um, theoretically, I thought it should be better at least. Um, so this is just about what I'd ended up with at that point, and then I decided to go with either CNC machining or water jet or laser cut or something to get all these holes in the right place because I began to realize that there's a lot of drilling that would need to be done and there's no way I could get this big bottom plate onto my drill press to drill it properly. Uh, plus, if I did had it done by CNC machining or water jet or something, it would be a lot more accurate and a lot more easier than it would be if I did it myself. So at that point, I decided um, I located a piece of aluminium that was small enough from Nelco's plate offcut stock, and it was big enough that I could go with uh, get rid of these wooden blocks under here and use aluminium blocks under there as well. So let's have a look at my, here we go, this is almost what I've ended up with and you can see those wooden blocks have been replaced with a couple of 8mm high um, slabs to get it up to the 16mm difference to meet that motor and um, I've drawn, now that I became convinced that this is what I was going to go with, I started thinking about how to, how it will be constructed and where everything's going to be laid out to not collide with each other. So that's why I've drawn these bolts coming up from below. They're not actually going to be like that, obviously. I just put them there like this to remind myself that there was going to be something here and that I couldn't put something on the other side of it, like like these here. Um, this, 
I think I'm going to have to make these bolts shorter and so that they're only going to be th threaded into this piece and they're not going to come through the back. I'm still not exactly sure what I'm going to do about the back, whether I'll need this or not. Um, but one other new development is this piece here, which is going to be cut out of the bottom. So you can see there's a sort of a shape there that that's been removed and that's going to be that piece. And the idea with that is that you'll be able to pick it up from here. So this will be like a hand hold where you can pick the whole thing up, hopefully. And of course, it's going to go on to here as a reinforcement so that there's um, so that it's not just this heavy weight hanging from this point here. So it's going to take some stress off this back piece. That's the idea. Um, and to mount the motors onto the end of the gantry and the top of the z-axis like this. Um, this little piece here is also 8mm thick, so I managed to get that cut from the plate as well. And then this piece at the back is just a 3mm flat bar that I found at Bunnings. And some of these other pieces, of course, I haven't, haven't mentioned, but um, this other stuff here is quite easy to find at Bunnings or places like that. And I didn't need to go to Nalco to get any special channel or large sized stuff. So it's the largest piece I'm using is 50 by 50 equal angle. So that's this piece, this piece here, this one, like that. Yeah, so um, that's pretty much what it's going to turn out like, hopefully. And if we look at the pieces that are planned to be cut for this, whoops. I um, originally wanted to get this done by CNC, but it didn't work out. Uh, it was going to be too expensive. But along the way, I had this plate cut. It was originally one piece, but I cut it down to these two pieces like that. And so these two pieces here are the um, original pieces. And um, I found a place that would cut these using water jet instead of CNC. And that's what I went with. So this is the before and after. That's the before. This is the after there for that piece. Uh, it's changed a little bit since then, but this is roughly what it's going to be. And this is the other before and after here. Um, so the reason I cut them into two plates was because the they were too big to f the one plate was too big to fit on the CNC machine, but if I had have known that I was going to be using water jet, that would not have been a problem because the water jet table is really really big. So anyway, this is the design that I submitted to the water. Well, unfortunately, the Windows recording program messed up the end of that file, but I think I'd pretty much said all I wanted to say. Um, I have I think I have everything I need to complete this now. I have all the motors, I have the Arduino gerbil controller thingy. Um, I have a whole bunch of more of these rails, some limit switches, a panic button, all that kind of stuff. But I won't bother looking at that now um, because I'll look at it, each one of those things in detail as I get to it while I'm building this thing up. But anyway, um, in the next video, hopefully we can see what the water jet thingy does and we'll get some plates cut and get ready to tap lots of holes in the plates to start building it. Anyway, until then, thanks for watching.